The International Association for Near-Death Studies presents NDE Radio, a weekly exploration of near-death experiences and similar encounters with the other side. Now, here's your host, Lee Whitting. Welcome to NDE Radio, brought to you by IONS, the International Association for Near-Death Studies. I'm your host, Lee Whitting. Today we present part two of the lecture on prophetic NDEs given by researchers Robert and Suzanne Mays at the 2019 IONS Conference in Philadelphia. If you missed last week's part one of their talk, I suggest you listen to that show in our past show's archives. Robert and Suzanne Mays have studied the phenomena of near-death experiences together for some 40 years. Their research focuses on the phenomena connected with the out-of-body component of NDEs, especially veridical perceptions and other verified paranormal phenomena during an NDE. On this and last week's show, Robert and Suzanne present their lecture, Prophetic Visions in Near-Death Experience with Warnings for Our Current Time. NDEs frequently give indications that time during the experience is suspended, that the transcendent realm is actually timeless, and that the events of the NDE seem to occur all at once. One element in some NDEs relating to time is a life preview, visions of likely future events in the NDE's personal life or in world events as well. And that's the discussion that we continue today. Let me note again that IONS takes no particular political or religious point of view in the work it does or in the conference lectures it presents. Robert and Suzanne are attempting here simply to report on a confluence of prophecies they have collected from near-death experiencers themselves. So thank you very much for coming to our presentation this morning. The second category is economic and social chaos due primarily to widespread power failures. Howard Storr, during his NDE, had a conversation with Jesus and the angels. They said, your country will collapse economically, which will result in civil chaos. Because of the greedy nature of the people, you will have people killing people for a cup of gasoline. The world will watch in horror as your country is obliterated by strife. And then another part, There will be an electronic failure worldwide leading to societal chaos and the destruction of most of the world as we know it. The catastrophe will wipe out all electronics and our power grid, and we will quickly be without water, food, transportation. Economic chaos will lead to people stealing, killing, hoarding. And again in the same vein, Tom Beck says there will be attacks on our banking systems and utility infrastructure. Food and water will become scarce commodities as our transportation systems fall apart. We will be without utilities, no electricity, no water, no sewage system, no internet, no phone. We will be in the dark. There will be food riots and anarchy in the streets. The country will disintegrate into small local territories. Now there are two plausible scenarios that could happen which would bring this about, and the more plausible of them is that due to the weakening of Earth's magnetic field, solar flares can begin to cause (coughs) catastrophic failure of electrical power grids, satellites, internet connections, and electronics. Even small solar flares can now cause serious disruption because of the weakened magnetic field. Another plausible scenario is that terrorist or foreign governments attack the U.S. power grid, electronics, transportation infrastructure. The next category is U.S. earthquakes, tsunamis. And this is subject RR, the initials. It is highly probable that an eight or nine magnitude earthquake will occur in Southern California before the end of December 2020. There will be a wall formed by shattered glass from the skyscrapers in downtown LA with fires flooding. There will be thousands of corpses decaying in streets, unable to be hauled out of the wreckage. And also from RR we have, a tsunami on the west coast occurs after an unexpected earthquake in Oregon. Due to that quake, there will be massive loss of life along the coastal cities. Sacramento, California will flood. 
there will not be enough time for residents to escape to higher ground. They will drown in Sacramento Lake. And I want to point out that if you don't know the geography of California, Sacramento is only at 30 feet elevation above sea level. And another subcategory of this is that the U.S. will be split in two. And Sarah Bonnell Manet, or Manette, says, a huge earthquake occurred in the middle of the United States. It seemed to split the U.S. in half about where the Mississippi River is. The crack in the earth that resulted was huge, miles wide, and as it opened, the earth seemed to swallow everything. Water flowed in from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up to the Great Lakes. And Sharon Milliman says, I was shown a silver ribbon splitting the United States apart. I was told that this ribbon was a river. I felt it was the Mississippi River. The ribbon becomes larger over time. And now we get to the reset of the earth. Because a number of NDUs have had the vision that a major portion of the earth will be destroyed. So Ken Lett's vision. The next thing I was shown involved a huge explosion coming from the area of Wyoming or Montana, which could be the supervolcano in Yellowstone exploding. A giant mushroom cloud forms above the explosion and a ring of white clouds that stays close to the ground expands across the continent all the way to the east coast as all life is extinguished. And Tom Beck has a similar vision but in a different part of the earth and a different mechanism. A comet will strike the earth, I think it will hit in China because I see what appears to be Chinese writing on signs of vehicles where it strikes. The largest pieces of the comet strike the ground with enough force that they throw up mountains of dirt, dust, debris, and smoke that blocks out the sun. Sometime later, there will be worldwide earthquakes and eruptions of volcanoes. I also see a period of winter that will be brought on by all the dust in the air. This winter will last for a couple of years, causing worldwide starvation. And the plausible scenarios are, again, the supervolcano, something on the order of Lake Toba explosion that happened 75,000 years ago, can destroy a wide area of land from massive ejecta. And they can also cause a global winter lasting five to 10 years, and in the past have caused mass extinctions. An asteroid or comet can also cause similar effects. And the last category is a bit of a relief. After the reset, uh, and Ken Lett's vision, after the explosion I saw that North America remains uninhabited for a long time as it becomes overgrown with many trees again. Eventually there will be human activity. I was shown a small group of people living in a hut type structure in the southeast. They were living simple lives, much like tribes of natives, before the U.S. was established. And Howard Storm in his NDE was shown this vision, which would be towards the end of 2100s. We were in a beautiful natural wooded setting. The angels told me that this was the future, a garden that people tended. People were dressed simply and had exotic ornaments, and he believes that they are a kind of spiritual technology. They are all participated in child rearing and teaching as the most important activities of their lives. The people will grow only enough food for their needs. With prayer, the plants will produce huge fruits and vegetables. Collectively, all the people of the world will control the weather. There will be countless small communities of people, each with its own identity and culture. All people will be able to communicate telepathically. There will be no need for technological devices since humans have the power to control matter and energy. This will come about in 200 years. Now, I want to go through, give you a context, spiritual context, of the prophetic visions. And we gleaned from in the ears, particularly in the ears that have had these prophetic visions, seven basic principles, spiritual principles, 
that are revealed by NDEs. The first is, and the most important, we are all eternal spiritual beings. We do not die with the death of the physical body. Second, there is an overarching spiritual aspect of reality that encompasses all of physical reality. And you can refer to our previous research presentations on both one and two. There is a plan and purpose for life on earth. Things specifically to be learned, experienced, and done. Now about 60% of NDEers were told during their NDE, it's not your time. You must go back. You have more to do on earth. So the implication is that we have chosen our life's difficulties and challenges for spiritual growth and maturity to be enriched by life experiences and to grow in universal compassion and love towards all. Moving on, Betty Eady says, evil exists for a divine purpose. Because of it, we become aware of our weaknesses as we gain control over our appetites and desires, we begin to see how the influence of evil has strengthened us. When we see evil for what it is, we become less susceptible to its negative influences. We become free from ignorance and fear, and therefore we are more wise in choosing our course in life. And the malevolent retarding beings incite in us fear, anger and hate, lies and doubt, and greed and selfishness. But they are all working ultimately for our benefit to strengthen us. The fifth point is that suffering also exists for a divine purpose. Nancy Van Alphen says, suffering has come about by the separation of man from God and has become a learning tool to help us make our way back. George Ritchie says, suffering arises as the consequences of our actions. When God gave us free will, he also gave us the responsibility of suffering, the consequences of using that free will, if we do not use it under his guidance. Rene Passero, Suffering in this life can actually be a gift. Suffering is a catalyst which creates for us opportunities to grow spiritually. Without suffering, how could we develop compassion? Without danger, how could we develop courage? Betty Eady says, suffering can teach us. In my life review, I understood my own ignorance in life. And now I understood why others had done negative things to me. Seeing events from their perspectives, I could forgive them freely because I perceived their ignorance too. And for number six, we have free will. We have the choice how to act and respond. God will not interfere with our free will choices. And the seventh principle of the seven, and this is important for understanding the prophetic visions, the collective environment of all human thoughts, feelings, words, and actions works on the spiritual level, forming a kind of spiritual atmosphere around the earth. This spiritual atmosphere has an influence on everyone for good or ill. Nandi Ear told Margot Gray, I saw a gray miasma, or noxious atmosphere, spread all over the earth. It was the vibration of fear that was causing it. This fear was causing violence and social unrest. It would only get worse until people learned to overcome fear with love and goodwill toward all men. And this spiritual reality can be seen at work in the world as the ripple effect, spreading out as more and more people are influenced. Some positive examples, 
are the positive responses in the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks and the worldwide response to the election of Barack Obama. And some negative examples are the source of the mass shootings that were motivated by racism, anti-Semitism, and white supremacy in Charleston, Pittsburgh, and El Paso. And another aspect of this atmosphere is that spiritual beings and forces of nature are also at play in the, uh, in the spiritual atmosphere. So we have positive, benevolent, progressive spiritual beings who give us guidance, assistance, and protection in our lives. And most end of years know that. But there are also these negative, retarding, evil spiritual beings that are tempters and tricksters working to challenge block and disrupt our lives and how do we respond that's the question and the forces of nature are also affected positively and negatively as a consequence of human thoughts feelings and deeds that Edie said planet earth possesses a spirit a life force of its own in a very real way it is a living entity Currently, the earth suffers from evil and abuse heaped upon it, which pull and distort the earth's harmony, throwing natural forces off balance. Seasons will continue to be altered. Earthquakes will split the earth. Floods will rage. Disaster will follow disaster as a direct result of our collective disregard for universal laws. And Rabbi Robbins, Stephen Robbins, who's N.D. Ear. Many negative effects of human destruction, pollution, and contamination can be reversed only by human actions or by centuries of gradual healing of the earth. God cannot do it. God cannot intervene and clean up the earth for us. So now, finally, what do prophetic visions mean, given these spiritual principles? Four things. First, the prophetic visions are warnings of likely future human deeds, future accidents, and future natural disasters. And then the year told Gray, I saw that the last time the world faced a similar situation was just before the destruction of Atlantis which is the flood. Then, as now, people were given plenty of warning that they were disregarding natural and spiritual laws, and if they continued to carry on as they were going, they would eventually have to face the results of their folly. But they chose to disregard the signs. In the end, all but a few who had heeded the warnings perished. It will be the same this time. And remember, point number two, nothing is completely predestined. These events can be averted or mitigated, even massive natural disasters. Tom Beck says, occasionally I have visions of disasters that do not take place. I have been told that this is because the people have free will and sometimes change their minds. I take assurance knowing that the vision can be changed and the outcome does not have to be as I first saw. It can be modified by the choices we make. Maybe that is the lesson to be learned, that the visions are real, but the outcome does not have to be. And the third point. The prophetic visions convey the urgency of what we need to do to avert or mitigate them. Renee Passero, in her 2018 book, says, We are on a path of self-destruction. There is no more time to waste. And the fourth point is, so if a change is going to happen, it begins with each of us. 
the being of light made it very clear to Daniel Brinkley that we are all mighty spiritual beings and that our destiny is in our hands. So how should we respond to adversities before they actually come? There are four things that we can do. The first is to develop absolute equanimity toward everything that may come. Remember that we do not die with the death of the physical body. And so our death is not our end. Remember that suffering isn't going to last forever. Margot Gray says, those empty ears who felt that the events foreseen are now inevitable, nevertheless, and this is an important subtle point, even though they are inevitable, nevertheless, these empty ears stress that rightly understood, the outcome is both necessary and desirable. So even the destruction of the earth is necessary and ultimately desirable, that is to say, the reset of the earth. And they all ultimately work for the good. And the second thing is to work in service to others out of love. And Daniel Brinkley, who is the premier in the ear, who volunteers to serve others in hospice, says, what matters to spirit in the life review is how often you are willing to help others through your love, kindness, and compassion. And Andy Lance Richardson says, service is the answer to reclaiming our society and changing our hearts as a people. With service, unity replaces selfishness as each person becomes deeply committed to the good of the whole rather than one's own self-interest. And what can empty ears especially do? We should all do these things, but empty ears are especially capable to help avert the prophetic visions. And the ears have experienced the spiritual world and know that we do not die. So the third thing is prayer. And the ears have special abilities to pray, visualize, send healing, and compassion to others. Prayer is the greatest act of free will, prayer especially together in groups. Ned Doherty said, I was told and he has had prophetic visions. I was told that the world could be saved, not by its leaders, but by the prayer groups throughout the world. I was told that the prayers of a group of 20 could save a nation from war. Amen. Right on. Practice prayer and compassion towards all people, even one, or I should say especially, one's adversaries and enemies. Professor Abednego, you know how he feels about certain things. Nothing good can come of Trump's narcissism. Still, I pray for him. That foolish man. And fourth, a great awakening is happening. Spread the word that we all need to change. Betty Eady said, our world stands on the brink of a spiritual renaissance, a revival of spirituality that will sweep the earth and change it in significant ways. The great awakening has already begun. Light and knowledge have begun to flow from heaven in greater intensity. Evil, by its opposing nature, is rising up to challenge this awakening. But the harder the opposition, the harder the angels and good people will work to create it. And Rabbi Robbins says, if we rise to our ultimate challenge and make a holy response, a miracle is possible that shifts the heart of humanity. So thank you very much. <laughs> 
Well, that's all the time we have for today. My thanks again to Robert and Suzanne Mays for sharing their research on NDEs and prophecy, which was first presented at the IONS conference near Philadelphia. For more about IONS, please go to IANDS.org. If you'd like to listen to this show again or any of our past shows, just go to our website at nderadio.org and join us again next Monday, 11 a.m. Eastern, for more NDE Radio. This is Lee Whitting saying thanks for listening.